Somebody better start bowing down and respecting his mighty hand, respecting who he is. He's not like us. He's not forgetful like us. He's not loose with his promises. He's not impotent to where he cannot carry through what he, he is a God that can cash the check that he wrote. I kill and make alive. I wound and I heal. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. Uh Uh-oh. This was a point that was made and you write this down. Please write this down. Please write this down. This is one of his other important passages. And there is none that can deliver out of my mighty hand. I want to pull up this. How often is that brought up about God's mighty hand? How often is that brought up? Well, let's look and see. If I just type in mighty hand, Exodus 3.19. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless compelled by a mighty hand. Well, whose mighty hand will that be? It's going to be God's hand. 32.11 of Exodus. O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? I want you all to notice this theme that's developing. Then he says the same thing in Deuteronomy 3.24. O Lord God, you have only begun to show your servant your greatness and your mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or on earth who can do such work and mighty as your acts? Deuteronomy 34, by a mighty hand and outstretched arm and by great deeds of terror, all of which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt. Now, we can keep going. This mighty hand keeps showing up so far in all of the all of the books that we've covered. Right. Why is that important? Why is this issue of his mighty hand important? Well, can I ask you guys a question? Was there anyone in Israel as God was bringing them out of Egypt, out of captivity? Do you think there's anyone that might have may have had some reservations about going, about leaving? We can't leave. That's too far to go. Do you think that there's anyone out of in Egypt who disobedient, who was wayward? Do you all think there was anyone in Egypt coming out, any Jew who may have did not want to go, who was wayward, who was full of sin? Do you all think that there was anyone in Egypt who did not want to go or who did not want to follow God, who was not obedient? Do you all think that all remember, we're talking about about a million, two million people that are coming out. We know there were 600 plus thousand men of fighting age. So that's not including all the men who were maybe handicapped or disabled or who were old or the children of the women. So at least a million, at least a million, maybe two million. So, yeah, the answer is yes. There were some people who were wayward. Why is that important? Well, we listen, here's why we believe here's here's why we know for a fact. Here's why we know for a fact that there were some disobedient, wayward people. Because he said so. (laughs) He said so. They didn't just get disobedient before. I mean, after he brought them out, they've been disobedient. They were just disobedient, period. Right. I think about it. How did they get into the land in the first place? Because of uh, 11 of these brothers' disobedience, 11 of these brothers seeing their jealousy to throw Joseph uh, in, uh, in, into the pit and then to sell him off. These were disobedient people. They, didn't, they weren't godly. They weren't holy uh, and without sin before then. So, yeah, they were that way. Now, why is that important? Do you think that any of those people in Israel ever wanted to any, just maybe one, Maybe two. Do you think that anybody in Israel ever wanted to wander away from God? Do you think that anybody in Israel ever wanted to leave God? Well, the answer is yes. They murmured and grumbled. Why did you bring us out here just to die? We were better off back there. So we we even have biblical proof that there were people who wanted to leave. They were like, I ain't, I'm not feeling this. We, at least in Egypt, we had food. At least we, you brought us out here to die, Moses. You got, got, you got us out here just traveling around for nothing. We, we ain't going to know. We're going in circles. The question is, were there any in Israel who wanted to depart, who wanted to wander, who wanted to leave? Yes. Here's the answer. Or here's another question. Did any of Israel leave God? Did any of them wander away? Did any of them turn around and go back? 
Was there anybody in Israel who was not brought out of Egypt? Think about this. Every last one of them, God brought out. Every last one of them, he brought out. Every last one of them. Why is that important, guys? Again, we're developing uh, an understanding about how God works. He delivered every last one of them out, and they were not uh, sinless people. They were wayward people. They were grumbling. These people literally saw, we're talking about people that saw the miracles. We, we're talking about people that saw the miracles. We, they literally saw uh, this smoke, this fire of God. Well, you know where I'm going. Because this concept isn't a New Testament concept, guys. God doesn't, ch- I, the Lord, do not change. I, I don't need you guys to be in 2022 to figure out uh, that I'm, that I'm who I, you should have figured it out before then. I am changed. Where you all been? I've been I've been here all this time. And so even with those folks in Israel, as wayward as they were, he delivered every last one of them. Why? Why did he deliver? Oh, I, listen, I almost wish I had an organ. Why did he deliver all of those people in Israel? How was that? How was it possible for him to deliver every last one of those people in Israel? Somebody tell me somebody, somebody in this chat, somebody tell me how was God able to deliver every last one? one of them. And there's nobody with a Bible that can say he did not deliver every last one of them. Somebody tell me, how was God able to deliver every last one of them? Hint, I just gave you the hint. I just gave you the clue. I love you, Alan. I love you. God's mighty hand. By his might. That's why he keeps saying, by my mighty hand. By my, not mine, not mine. My, my, my hand ain't, ain't, ain't mighty. Um, but God, by his mighty hand. Why does he keep saying, by my mighty hand? Hmm. I want y'all to think about that for a second. I'm not just, listen, I'm not just making this up. I'm not just throwing something out there just because I'm throwing something on the wall or on the, on the, on the computer screen and seeing what sticks. No, there's a reason why I'm saying this. He says, I brought you out by my mighty hand. What's the big deal about your mighty hand? Someone, someone, please tell me what's so special about God's mighty hand. Why are we even talking about God's mighty hand? So what? Okay, God, you got a mighty hand. So what? So what? Okay, fine. You're God. You should have a mighty hand if you're God. I mean, my God, you should have a mighty hand because you're God. Why am I talking about his mighty hand? I'll tell you why. Let me put it up on the screen. So people can stop making this ridiculous argument against what I keep preaching. Here it is. God says, Jesus says, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. But they run to this passage and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Isn't this the same mighty hand of God that we're talking about? That he would that he delivered every last one of them, even the ones that wanted to be wayward. Josh, I love you, brother. (laughs) Josh is right there. Uh, That's the same God. And so when someone makes the statement, when someone makes the statement, yeah, but you can walk away from his hand, that's his mighty hand. It ain't your mama's hand. Your mama's hand ain't that tough. Your daddy's hand wasn't that tough. We're talking about God's mighty hand. If you are in his hand, you ain't walking away. If you want, first of all, you're not going to want to walk away. So please get that understood. He will. That's why he can say he will lose not one. That's why he says, I and the father are one. Look what he says. Look what he says, guys. He says, my father who has given them to me, who, who, who gave you to be in his mighty hand, that very same hand, his mighty hand put you in his hand. Are are you with me? His mighty hand put you in his hand. That is, if you are in his hand, some of y'all are on the outside of his hand thinking you're in his hand, but Jesus says, make sure you are, make sure you are. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord shall enter the kingdom. Paul says, examine yourself to see who put you in his mighty hand. God through his mighty hand. And he says, uh, my father who has given them, who's of them, all these sheep, is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch him out of my father's hand. Reiterating verse 28, he says, I and the father are one. So it's not like he all of a sudden gets to the New Testament and comes up with this new way of saying things. He's been saying and been speaking about his mighty hand. Somebody better start bowing down and respecting his mighty hand, respecting who he is. He's not like us. He's not forgetful like us. He's not loose with his promises. He's not impotent to where he cannot carry through what he, he is a God that can cash the check that he wrote. 
That's who he is. That's who he is. And again, this is why I say you in order to come up with the way that, that and I know I'm jumping to it about this issue of salvation. You have to disregard the entire Old Testament. You have to disregard all the promises. Well, but this passage says you have to you have to uh, continue. You have to remain. You have to stay faithful. Yeah, I know. You're right. You, you are absolutely right. And you will. You know why? Do you know why you're going to stay faithful? Do you know you want to know why you're going to remain? Do you want to know why you won't lose what he's given you? Not because you're holding on to it, because he's holding on to it. How is he holding on to you? And how is he going to make sure that you are going to be delivered? How is he going to make sure that you're going to remain faithful? How is he going to make sure that you are going to continue to believe? Because he gave you the Holy Spirit and he's doing so through the power of his what? His mighty hand.